and welcome back to Football Made Simple. For much of the 1920 season, Sheffield United were in the hunt for a European place. Although in the end they didn't quite make it, finishing 5 points off, led by Wilder's interesting tactics, they still managed to capture the attention of the English football world. But what were Wilder's tactics? Let's take a look. When assessing tactics, we use stats at certain points, and a great place you can get stats and news for your favourite teams and players is through the OneFootball app. It's completely free through the sponsored link in the description below. Wilder's preferred formation is a 3-5-2, with the following personnel. Although the forwards are the area where the most flexibility and variation is seen. This may be because, in the Wilder system, it is one of the less specialised position in comparison with others. When building from deep, if they are being pressed high, they can go more direct to the two forwards when necessary, with one of the midfield three looking to pick up any second balls. If this is coming from the centre backs though, at times the two forwards make runs into the wide regions, potentially opening up space down the centre for the midfielder to make the run to receive the longer ball. However, although they average only 44% possession, the fourth lowest in the league, their most interesting mechanisms still come when they look to play it short. It is important to note that the wide areas are where Sheffield thrive, and in fact, no team plays through the centre less often than their 20%. However, if they remained in their default shape, there would be light in the wide areas. So in the first phases of play, Basham and O'Connell will tend to drift wide to give horizontal coverage of the pitch, whilst the wingbacks advance high and become four wingers, and this shape will now allow them to have two men in each wide region. In this phase, the conservative midfielders are useful, as if there is a turnover, there isn't direct access to the gaps left by the wide centre-backs. And when the midfielders do get onto the ball, they keep it relatively simple, looking to move the ball quickly. Sheffield United like to play fairly vertical, so they don't spend much time in the central regions, and in fact, only Villa, Norwich and Arsenal spend less time there, and only City and Liverpool spend more time in the opponent's third. And their fullbacks are key to this attacking phase, pushing high up the pitch and often being the outlet. And when they receive the ball, we begin to see their famed overlapping centre-backs. Both Basham and O'Connell can push high depending on what side the ball is to help provide the width. Oftentimes, Sheffield can provide cover by dropping one of their central midfielders deeper into the vacated space. But just as easily, Sheffield can shift to a back two instead, with the far side centre back coming in narrow to support. And the far wide wing backs tend to remain relatively wide, ready for a potential switch, with Sheffield attempting the sixth most switches in the league despite having the fourth lowest possession. But often, the goal is to attack the byline, and the movements of the full back are linked with that of the wing back and whether he chooses to tuck in or stay wide, and the centre back either uses an overlapping or underlapping run as a result. And once the space is created, they look for the cross. Importantly, Sheffield can commit numbers into the box with their central midfielders attacking the box well for a potential cutback. A quick note, by having their centre backs overlap, it means that they can have up to three men wide with the central midfielders for the overload, while still having the forwards central. In a traditional back three, the forwards end up moving wide to provide width, but as Sheffield are reliant on crosses, this would not benefit them. And in fact, only City and Liverpool cross more often despite having well over 10% more possession. But defensively, Sheffield excel. Only Liverpool and the two Manchester clubs have conceded less often than they have. The key to this is compactness. Rather than looking to counterpress, they look to protect their goal by dropping deep early. In fact, only Newcastle press less often than they do. But if it is a quick counter, the wide central midfielders can drop to cover the space left behind. In general, however, they drop into a simple 5-3-2 looking to clog the centre, making the goal a smaller target. This, along with Henderson excelling in goal, means that they have been able to far exceed their expected goals against. Walters Sheffield was highly impressive in 1920 for a promoted team. But how do you think this upcoming season will go? Drop it down below. And a special thanks to my Patreons whose support allows me to cover more niche teams. If you want to support and get early access to videos and exclusive videos, check out patreon.com slash footballmadesimple. And a big shout out to Jordan Rodriguez, Harold Mendoz, Brandon Weber, Neil Gan, Tommy and Pedro. But that's all for today and remember, keep it simple. <laughs>